This video is about the third generation of the Red Army faction, a German or former German terrorist organization. The third generation was active from 1982 to 1998. In the end, the Red Army faction dissolved itself. Right here, right at the start, it should be mentioned that it is not too much known about the background, the persons involved and the connections with regards to the third generation. But what we know is that Wolfgang Grams and Birgit Hogefeld were key terrorists. To the background. The second generation of the Red Army faction was in prison, or most of them, uh, of these terrorists were in prison. And the Red Army faction faced an identity crisis. Was, the objectives were not clear and the ideology underlying their terrorist cause was, was not clear. The German society, or the majority of the German society, always rejected the Red Army faction. But during the 70s, these left-wing terrorists had support in the left-wing scene, in parts of the left-wing scene. But this support was now over, so the Red Army faction was nearly completely isolated. In 1982, in November, the two most prominent leaders of the second generation, Monat and Klar, were arrested. In 1984, six more terrorists were caught by the police and then German officials thought, all right, that must be it. The Red Army faction should be near to a collapse. But unfortunately, that was not correct. And Germany was in for a surprise, a nasty surprise, when a series of murders, murders started. Firstly, in 1985, the Red Army faction killed the CEO of an arms manufacturer, Zimmermann, and then they attacked the US Air Base near, a US Air Base near Frankfurt, the Rhine Main Air Base. Three persons were killed. In 1986, a Siemens manager and his driver were killed, and the same year, the German diplomat Gero von Braunmüller was murdered by the Red Army faction. In 1989, Alfred Herrhausen, the CEO of Deutsche Bank, was murdered. But now the Red Army faction should go down. And in the year of the German unification, reunification in 1990, lots of Red Army faction dropouts in eastern Germany were exposed. They had enough from terrorism years before, went to the GDR and could go into hiding there. But now they were brought to justice. But there was one major assassination that the Red Army faction did. They killed the head of the Treuhand, the trust agency, Rohwedder. And it should, mention, should be mentioned here that that was a spectacular assassination because with a sniper rifle, the Red Army faction shot Rohwedder from quite a distance um, from the other side of the River Rhine. So that's led to some conspiracy theories that uh, they were not good enough or not trained, not yeah, not well trained enough to do this. So probably we'll never know. Anyway, the GSG9 conducted GSG9 conducted an operation in 1993. They arrested the two terrorists Hogefeld and Grams, and through the rest, Grams was killed. Unfortunately or tragically, the GSG9 officer Michael Neftzeller was also killed in action. And then in 1998, the Red Army faction declared itself the solution. That was the end of 25 years of left-wing terrorism in Germany. The German authorities and the German society prevailed. They did not give in. They didn't surrender to the terrorists. But most of the unmasked terrorists refused to cooperate with the authorities and also refused to cooperate with the victims, so lots of aspects, lots of things are not uncovered. This means that many personal responsibilities and the wider context of the Red Army faction terrorism remains unclear. And in the end, it should be mentioned that it's nice to have a historic analysis of this, but it is quite tragic how many innocent victims they were because of the Red Army faction. That was the Red Army faction, the third generation in five.